Check one, two. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, let's go on the record. Today is October 28th, 2024. The time is uh, 6.54 p.m. My name is Ken Sire. I am a regulatory law judge with the Missouri Public Service Commission, and I will preside over this portion of uh, the hearing th this evening. The commission has set this time for a local public hearing to give members of the public a chance to comment about Missouri American Water Company's application for a general rate increase for water and sewer service, which is commission file WR-2024-0320. The commission regulates the rates charged by public utility companies in Missouri to ensure that those rates are just and reasonable. The commission also regulates the quality of service and safety of the operations of public utilities. The commission is composed of five commissioners. They are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate. The commission employs a staff of engineers, accountants, attorneys, financial analysts, and other specialists in the field of utility regulation. With me uh, tonight is Commissioner Glenn Kolkmeyer and Commissioner John Mitchell and joining us online are uh, Commissioners Maida Coleman and Jason Holzman. The Commissioners have not made any decisions in this case and cannot answer any questions today because they have to remain impartial until after all the evidence is presented at the evidentiary hearing in this matter, um, scheduled to begin on February 27th, 2025. Uh, Commissioner Kolkmeyer, would you like to make opening remarks? Yes, thank you, Judge. On behalf of all the commissioners, I want to welcome everyone here this evening. Uh, we welcome your comments. Uh, we have several signed up on the sign-up sheet, and we uh, will take your testimony. As like the judge said, we're unable to uh, answer any questions. This is the first process of, of the rate hearings. Um, so we have not heard from anyone else. Um, th this is step one, is the local public hearing. So here again, we welcome your comments. Thanks again for coming. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, as you know, there are attorneys here today representing the parties in this matter, but for the sake of the record, uh, would each of you identify yourselves and state which party you're representing, uh, beating with the company? Yes, good evening. Rachel Niemeyer, representing Missouri American Water Company. With me tonight is Rich Svinland, Svinland excuse me, uh, Missouri American Water President. And then... Uh, <coughs> Carolyn Kerr, representing the Missouri Public Service Commission staff. John Kleiser, on behalf of the Office of the Public Counsel, my contact information is with the reporter. And are there any other uh, attorneys here representing parties? All right. Uh, the way we'll proceed uh, tonight will be to call the names of uh, listed on the sign-up sheet in the order that you signed up. Uh, when I call your name, please go uh, to the microphone. And I will place you under oath and ask you to state and spell your name. And then you can offer your comments to the commission. Uh, we will. Uh, try to limit comments to five minutes per person, although the sign-up list is not uh, too extensive today. Um, but once you finish your comments, please remain at the microphone in case there are questions from the commissioners or the uh, attorneys for the parties. So, the first name on the list tonight uh, is Bill Hosler. Mr. Hosler, if you would step up, please. And am I pronouncing that correctly? It's Hassler. Hassler. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mr. Hassler, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Um, if you would, state and spell your name. Bill Hassler, B-I-L-L-H-A-S-L-E-R. All right. Go 
go ahead. Yep, and I'm the uh, general manager for Stonebridge Village. Um, we're a gated community in Branson West, and uh, you know, we've been through uh, a number of, of rate changes, I think, as, as you guys probably know. Um, since Missouri American Water came in in 2011-12, uh, we've had the rate increases in, in 13, uh, 16, 18, 21, 23, and, then, and now. Uh, I, hopefully those are all correct. I know the one was uh, filed in maybe the year prior and then took place in the next year, but um, through that time, the residents who are primarily retired have, uh, th their rates have just uh, have gone up um, to a point where a, a lot of them are definitely feel like they've got hardship. I know that through the question and answer, um, somebody mentioned that there was an assistance uh, program uh, for poverty that, that they probably can't apply for. Maybe they can. Uh, I'll try to get more information on that later, but they're ma mainly retired, and uh, they do have a, uh, a limited I income as far as the ability moving forward. But dur also during that time, uh, Missouri American Water's stock's gone from $27 to $150, and um, that's one thing that I want to talk to the commission and, and make my comments to make sure that there's a focus on, um, you know, reviewing the increases in, in light of regional standards, um, you know, what the other uh, utility companies are doing and in the, in the standard increases that, that they're applying for. Everything seems to be around uh, 10 to, or 5 to 10 percent uh, for those improvements. And, and I know I just learned tonight that this rate uh, request is not for future improvements, which I'd originally thought it was. I thought I read that it was um, to go through 2004, 2000, or 2024, 2025. But uh, I just want to make sure that the PFC reviews um, what the regional standards are, uh, and I I'm not sure that that happens. But uh, also, it, it seems like that uh, the rate increase is used rather than seeking um, other financing options. Uh, and I know somebody said that they, that they do um, finance and, uh, and put into capital reserves earlier, but it feels like given the, given the company's financial health that this would be a more viable alternative rather than placing the full financial burden onto the rate payers. Um, primarily those that are retired. And, and I know that the residents of Stonebridge Village and, and me operating as the uh, business all have felt that, um, you know, that whoever it is, whether Missouri American Water or not, they're operating with a uh, kind of a regulated monopoly. And they should have uh, a focus on making that commodity affordable. And uh, just with the with the amount of rate increases and the severity of the rate increases, it doesn't feel like that that's the objective. Um, you know, it seems like it's more profitability over custom customer affordability. Um, so I'm just making the comment to the council to carefully consider the financial strain that the increases put on our residents especially vulnerable populations like retirees. Um, you know, as the authority, PSC has a responsibility to ensure that the rates remain fair, reasonable, and are aligned with uh, Missouri American Water's obligation uh, to serve the public affordably. That's all I have. Okay. All right, thank you. And Mr. Hasler, mm -hmm. uh, for Stonebridge Village, um, does Missouri American supply water and sewer or? Both. Both, yeah. okay. Water and sewer. All right. Do the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Hasler? Um, do, all right. Yes, Mr. Kleiser. Uh, I saw that you were reading from prepared statements. Did yes. you want to introduce those as an C exhibit? Could I do that? But is, do the question and answer uh, portion. I found out that a couple of my statements might not be accurate. Well, in that case, I would just recommend that you consider making a written comment to the commission's website. Okay. Never mind. Thank you. All right. Do any of the other attorneys have any questions? 
All right. Thank you, Mr. Hesler. Thanks. Uh, the next name on the list is Gene Phipps. Good evening. My name is Gene Phipps. G -E -N -E. Just a second. I think, I think we're going to get your microphone adjusted. <coughs> G-E-N-E-P-H-I-P-P-S. Okay. And I am a st also a Stonebridge resident. Okay. I moved there two years ago. Now, before you go any further, I'd like to place you under oath. I'd like to place you under oath. Oh, sure. So if you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And uh, your last name is spelled P-H-I-P-P-S? Correct. And your first name is Gene, correct? With a G. A G. G. <laughs> Short for Eugene. Gotcha. All okay. right. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So I, I moved here two years ago into the community. I moved to Stonebridge two years ago in, in October, and I've noticed so many different changes um, in regards to water compared to California, where I came from. <clears throat> they do have a, a scale of how much usage you actually do, which I brought proof. If you did that, it might penalize the people that use the water more and not the people that use the water less for the same rate all the way across, okay? Um, also, in regards to the sewage, we share one sewage grinder, you know, to grind up all of our waste. And each of us are getting charged $65 a month. That's excessive in my eyes. And, and I have it proof right here recent bill from American Water. And also like a, and it also shows that in California they charge 85 cents a day, period. And that's like $23 a month versus 165 plus an additional 10% that you charge for a surcharge on top of the wastewater. And so it gets dramatically expensive for those retired people, and I hope to be one of them. So, um, if you don't mind, I can submit these bills and show you the graphs from California versus here. Maybe they can consider doing that because there is, a, you know, different usage along the on the line of persons and people in a community. Could be two people in the house. Could be eight people in house. The water is different, not straight out one base. So, Mr. Kleiser. The witness asked himself, but if you need me to, I would move that they be offered as a hearing exhibit. Um, uh, Mr. Phipps, um, I, if, we, if we do accept these as, as exhibits, uh, I would assume you would want us to redact your uh, personal information, sure. address, and so forth. Um, and they're on there. OK. OK. I've also um, highlighted the, the fact that their CCF units is 748 gallons estimated per CCF, and if you notice on those, I utilized seven CCF per month, which is approximately 5,000 gallons per the month, and it's uh, $52 for that bill, and that's including waste. So it's, it's for the month, considering the other one that I handed you was for one month, $141. That's almost triple and, and you can see where it sounds like they're just overcharging the, the senior community and I, I just want to make certain that we're treated fairly along with everybody else okay mr. Phipps um, if you'll hold there for a second do the commissioners have any questions for you all right any of the attorneys for the uh, parties? 
All right. Just, Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Sorry, Judge. Oh, we sorry. don't object to those being admitted in the record, noticing okay. that California is a different jurisdiction. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you, Mr. Judge. We have no either. All right, the uh, next name on the list is Dan Ward. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Ward, good evening. Yes, evening, evening. My uh, name's uh, Daniel Ward. And uh, Mr. Ward, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, I'll try not to repeat what Mr. Hassler covered. He covered a lot of uh, financial information. Okay. But uh, before you go there, before you get to that, um, last name spelled W-A-R-D? Yes, sir. And Dan short for Daniel? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, I'll put notes in the uh, EFIS system as well uh, after this. Um, yes, uh, one of the things I noticed with American Water and how the billing's done and how the rate increase are done is that we're a separate district. They have Stone Bridge, they have St. Louis here, St. Louis there, blah, 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 blah. Well, I noticed the Stone Bridge rates are exorbitantly high compared to other rural areas within the state. The last hearing, I was quite disturbed uh, during the last rate increase hearing when a commissioner made an off-the-cuff comment that, well, uh, that increase will not bother those wealthy people in Stonebridge. Uh, I was irate by that, and I wrote a statement to the uh, uh, Office of the Council about that, and uh, uh, saying, you know, because I monitored and I actually sat in on the whole virtual uh, meeting during that hearing. Anyway, that said, we are retirees. It's a multi-use uh, community. It also experienced bankruptcy uh, back in uh, 2006, of which the, we had to absorb all the infrastructure for that uh, community of 3,000 acres with uh, um, barely half of the community developed. So we have our own cost to maintain that because the county does not give us any assistance. It's all uh, done privately. It's a multi-use. We have everything from efficiency apartments to large homes. And, uh, but we have more condos and more apartments and more rentals than we do homes, unfortunately. It was designed to have a lot of homes, but unfortunately, the bankruptcy, it wasn't built out. So it is not an overly wealthy community. It looks like it because we are proud of it and we take care of it, okay? So just, I, I just want you to consider that. The um, rates, what we're paying, this is the CEO of American Water's last quarterly report. And their goal is to have the rates at less than 1% of the annual income of the household. It's in his report right there. And there's the chart. I would gladly take w less than 1% of my annual income as my water rate. Because right now, boy, I wish it was 1%. I wish my income was my water bill times 100. Because, boy, I'd be doing pretty darn good, I'll tell you, if that was my monthly income. So anyway, that's the goal I think the state ought to pick up and the commission ought to pick up and what the CEO of American Water Works has as the goal of that organization. Also, the rate increases that he's uh, briefing to his stockholders doesn't seem to match what is in the proposal for rate increases for the state. So I think the CEO of the company has to go back to the uh, board of directors and 
stockholders and uh, redo his last uh, filing. <coughs> that also, from what I see here, they want an ROE, the, the CEO wants an average ROE of 10.75% for American water across the board. It looks like here that the ROE looks like to be 9.75, is that correct? That they're asking for? Okay, in the, uh, so that would be an increase of what, 0.5%, uh, which is pretty absor exorbitant for a, uh, a corporation to ask for a half a percent uh, ROE increase from the public. Uh, and let's see here. One thing else here. Yeah. I don't want to get too much into what Bill did already. Oh, and the cap. So the increase looks like it would cover, and this is according to the CEO of the company, increase being asked for would, would take and cover all the uh, capital investments in three years. So that's a pretty quick return to cover all your capital investments. And the capital investments, according to him, go all the way out so that would cover any capital investments out to 2026. And the amount he's saying would cover it in three years that their capital returns. So I really think what they're asking for in summary is pretty darn high. And definitely, if you look at the corporate financials, American Water is not poor. The other thing they're looking for, oh, this is a great chart here to show what the objectives of what the public utilities are about. This is, the, uh, this is what he briefed as the uh, dividend. That's American Water's dividend chart. That's where, our, that's where our money's going to. That's their dividend chart. That's real and projected. So what, what I'd like to see, this is a public utility, an essential service. That, that should be almost flat. If, if, you know, if we're using ethical decision making, that should be pretty flat. Anyway, what I'll do is, uh, that's the end of my testimony, and I'll put the uh, notes in the EFIS system. Thank you. All right. Mr. Ward, if, if you don't mind uh, sticking around in case there are questions, uh, do the commissioners have any questions? All right. All right, thank you for your testimony. Uh, the next name on the list is Jay Cooper. Mr. Cooper, uh, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And could you state and spell your name? Yes. Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, Cooper, C-O-O-P-E-R. All right. Thank you. Um, and um, what uh, service area are you a customer of Missouri America? I am outside of the city limits of Branson. Um, I am here representing a different de demographic. I'm not retired, <laughs> nor close to it. Um, I am a self-employed businessman. I have four children at home, as well as an eight-month pregnant wife. And um, I come from more of the, you know, the, the lower income side of town. And uh, most of them are either at home, just getting home from work, or still at work. Um, I don't need to give a lot of facts and figures. The other gentlemen have done very well at that. Um, but I just want to thank uh, the commission for being here and representing us. Um, my wife and I, uh, to date this year, have spent uh, almost $1,400 in water and sewage. Uh, we have a 1,200-square-foot home. And like I said, there's, there's six of us and one on the way. Um, we do have a pool. Uh, we do have some animals that we continually have to water. Um, but uh, though our income is not fixed, uh, with the economy and everything else, we are, we are um, underwater every month, um, having to pick up side jobs. My wife's having to watch kids and things. And um, thank you for everything that you guys do to protect us, but this is not a cell phone coverage where if you don't like the billing, you can go somewhere else. This is, you know, we either have to use American water or we have to dig a well and spend 
in between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars to dig our own well. So we're kind of stuck. And as you can imagine, with four kids under seven and one on the way, we have to have water. There's no way around it. So um, thank you guys for being here and listening to us. And from the younger generations, and I think I'm thankful for all the the retired people here to stand up and and they're on a fixed income and I appreciate them but there's a whole lot of us that are working every day several jobs I, I actually have two uh, businesses I run and still go backwards every month so thank you for your consideration and time all right all right uh, thank you mr. Cooper next on the list is John Gardner <clears throat> Mr. Gardner, would you, you're apparently the same height as the, Mr. Cooper, <laughs> would you raise your right hand please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given uh, tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And could you state and spell your name for the record? John Gardner, J-O-H-N-G-A-R-D-N-E-R. -E All right, go ahead, Mr. Gardner. Yeah, so um, not to plow the same ground, uh, maybe to use a Missouri term, but one comment, the Wasira, I, I would just ask the commission to get control over that process, and I, I don't mean to, to um, infer that you have no control, but when we hear there's Wasiras approved with no hearings, when we see Wasiras jump from 3.2 to 6.8% of our water bill with no notice, apparently, um, and we wonder how that happens. Um, and <clears throat> I learned here tonight that we should probably anticipate that Wasiras will be perpetual. Um, they will be asked for every year. Whether they will be granted or not will be another thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I would encourage you to make that process a little more transparent to the folks that are pay, paying the bills um, because, you know, again, that's an 8% increase in our water bill since January. And then we're faced with my second point, and that is more clear communications about this process. We have seen here tonight that the rate increase, the base rate increase, not counting the Wasira or any future Waseras, has been requested at 34% or 44% or potentially 50% depending on who you are as a customer. That's the first part of the communication issue. The second part is we now hear that <clears throat> this rate increase is to pay for improvements in the ground when it clearly states in the communication that this is for improvements through, um, I forget the month, but May, I believe, of 2026. So, you know, as, a, as, as the customer here, I would hope that's how we're looked at, um, we're confused, number one, about what is the increase, what does it cover, and how long is it going to last, okay? So I would ask <clears throat> that we do that. My third point is that we have planetary alignment for very high increased rate requests. We are coming out of high inflationary times, we're coming out of high interest times, and if you paid for that, and then you are going to depreciate that asset over, I heard up to 80 years, I thought, on a pipeline. Rich, is that right? Yeah, thank you. He's nodding his head and so, um, let the record show. Um, <laughs> so that, sorry, I was just on a jury and they, you know, they, they do that often. So let the record show. The record show. shall reflect. Yes. So um, <laughs> that when you have this equation that uh, John recently um, tried to explain to us very briefly. Um, I think we ought to look at all the elements of that equation and say, was this coming out of a situation that would um, produce the highest possible request here? So I would reiterate another idea that I heard. I think it was from the earlier session. That is that of uh, relative or regional comparisons of water costs because there are a lot of water suppliers around that we could base this comparison on to find out if we're in the ballpark or not. It doesn't feel like we're gonna be in the ballpark with this new incre increase request. So I would ask to do that. I read on the DNR site yesterday that Missouri is blessed with a number of wonderful aquifers with high quality water. 
and that water takes very little processing. We're standing on top of it right here and most of the places where we live. A lot of those folks, at least where I live, can drill wells. And if we're going to raise costs this much, we're going to increase well drilling to avoid those costs. That's going to have an impact on our aquifer. And a lot of the agricultural uh, issues are already showing up, I think, on some parts of the, of the state. So um, my point there is I think we have to look at the unintended consequences of this size of a rate increase and say, now, if you're a well driller, that's good. Maybe uh, an entrepreneur would start that business around here. But um, I think we have to look at the unintended consequences of it. That would be my fifth point of high rate increases, and people are going to drill wells and avoid it altogether. So, and I think the last but least is, you know, Missouri is a state, you know, that's in the lower half of the income brackets in the country. We shouldn't be paying some of the highest water rates in the country. Thank you. All right. And if, if you don't mind sticking around, um, Mr. Gardner, just I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, I believe it was your second point. Are you saying that uh, the the reasons given for the rate increase in in the notice for this meeting uh, is inconsistent with what you heard tonight? Um, yes, and I would add to that we got a letter from Missouri American Water that stated. 34% and the time frame which was into 2026 of the improvements tonight there was a handout that had 44% in it I believe the time frame described was the sign si the same from 23 to 26 but then we also heard tonight that no this increase is just paying for improvements in the ground I think was the way it was phrased so does that answer your question uh, yes um, do the commissioners have any questions? And yes, Ms. Niemeyer. I just want to make a clarification. The company had this one notice. The Tonight's handout that you're referring to was created by the Office of Public Counsel. I just want the record to show what that, what you're referring to. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the letter that was up on the table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, so the percentages were different, but the time frames both have into 2026, which apparently is not accurate. So, so, so future improvements, we should brace ourselves for more rate increase requests. That's, the con that's number six, maybe. Okay. All right. Any Thank other you. Any questions? Uh, okay. Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Uh, the next name on the list is Dwayne uh, Resch. It's not, it really shouldn't be that tough. <laughs> is it a German name? A little. Okay, I was, I was, I was taught that uh, two vowels together in a German name, you pronounce the second vowel. <laughs> well, anyway, um, how, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Rush. Okay, Rush. And... Uh, Mr. Rush, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I will. All right. And would you go ahead and state and spell your name for the record? Uh, my name is Dwayne, D-U-A-N-E. Last name Rush, R-O-E-S-C-H. Um, I live in Riverside Estates in Hollister. And I'm not going to go into what a lot of these other gentlemen have said already. Um, we have issues with everything in the neighborhood going on. It seems like our electricity, our water, the neighbor's dog. Uh, you know, it's, it's um, we moved here from Western Kansas 25 years ago thinking it would be a nice place to retire. And for 22 of those years, I think we were right on the money. But getting now, if you look around in here, there's more white heads and bald heads than there are young people. And uh, I, I sometimes think they're they're busy trying to make a living and just don't have time to come to these things to to say what's happening or else they're just paying the bills and let it go on. Um, we talk about this money that's wanted, how many millions of dollars. Um, we don't know if that's repair of piping that's already in the ta in the ground 
or new lines. Uh, there's nothing in there about um, how many new accounts we're servicing. I know over by um, the Chateau, my, there's a bunch of them over there. And all this will amount to return on their investment. Um, what I would like to do, respectively, have you consider not 44%, not 34%, but maybe 12, 14%. Um, I called the power company once to ask about fuel adjustment. And they said it's on there because we can. And I, I get to looking at this sometimes thinking, well, the price going up because we can. And I'd like to stay here, but taxes and everything, it really drove me out of Kansas. And I don't think we want to get into the water problems that Kansas and other states out west have. We are blessed with the aquifers and, and uh, the waters, for the most part, really clean, and we'd like to maintain that. But with that, we'll uh, again thank you for coming and listening to our, our comments today. Okay, and Mr. Roche, uh, you said you live in Hollister? Yes, sir. And you're a water and sewer customer um, or just water? My sewer, I pay uh, on E76. I'm on, a, I'm on a county sewer system, and there was a gentleman in here talking about how many people were on his grinder pump. We do have grinder pumps down there, but there's just one pump per um per per home we are in the floodplain down there and so that enters into it too um but um all in all that's my story and i'm sticking to it okay um are there any questions for mr roche all right thank, thank you thank you again all right next on our list is uh, rick floyd My All name right. is Rick Floyd, and I live in Stonebridge. Stonebridge? Okay. Yes. Mr. Floyd, would you raise your right hand, please? Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony I give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Thank you. And I'm standing up here because I can't hear very good, and I misunderstood what that sheet was I signed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a whole lot to have to say. All right. But about a year ago, American Water, where is that Stonebridge? explaining to us about how the new well would not be any increase in cost to our rates or anything like that. And in one of those meetings, one of the gentlemen actually kind of chuckled, and he said, we have many, many well-paid people who are in positions of committees and stuff to plan for the future, and we save for that. We set up budgets, and we save to do that stuff. So you don't have to worry about your rates being increased. And here we are a year later, and we're looking at rate increases. That's really all I needed to say. Okay. Just, and uh, for the sake of the record, your last name is F-L-O-Y-D? Yes. All right. Yeah. And I signed my wife's name up next, and she don't want to talk. <laughs> I, well, when I, when, I saw, when I saw the names... Back to back, I, I suspected that might be the case that either that. Uh, I was here for the door prize. Oh, <laughs> I see, I see. Did you win? <laughs> All right. Then we only have one last. We only have one name left on the list, and that's Karen Michael. Is that how you pronounce it, or is Ms. Michael here? Okay. No one is coming forward. Um, all right, is there anybody else who uh, did not sign up but would like to testify? All right, I'm hearing none. Um, for those people that, um, oh, I'm sorry. For those people that um, 
couldn't be here tonight, or uh, if you would like to provide additional comments, um, the Public Service Commission's website is psc.mo.gov, uh, G-O-V, and on the right side of the homepage, there's a link titled Submit Comments. If you click on that link and, and uh, submit your comments, please make sure that you reference this case number, which is, again, WR-2024-0320. Um, and Commissioner Mitchell, I believe, would like to make some closing comments. I would, Judge, and um, on, on behalf of the entire commission, um, we thank you for coming out tonight and sharing the, your thoughts and opinions with us. This is, this is a really important part of the process, and it's, it's important because it's the only time in the process that we get to hear directly from you. So I, I, I want to assure you that that is um, very important to us, and your comments are, are taken seriously. Um, I also want to say that I, I, we recognize that it can be a little bit intimidating to, to stand up and make comments in, in public, and I want to um, encourage you to um, file your comments on the, on the uh, PSC website if you have um, any additional comments or any additional information that you'd like to share. But, but again, on behalf of the commission, uh, we'd like to thank you for coming out tonight and sharing your, your thoughts and opinions with us. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you all for, for coming out tonight, and um, if there's nothing further, this hearing is adjourned and we'll go off the record. Thank you.